Hey Andre, I have the most off-road worthy Jeep Renegade you can buy. The lovely yellow Trailhawk. Well, I have the most off-road worthy compass you can buy. The orange compass Trailhawk. All right, and I'm betting that mine won't make it up to the top of Gold Mine Hill. How about yours? I think mine will. All right, so the bet is mine will get to stage two and mine will get on top of stage three. I disagree. Okay, well, let's see. Under the hood of the Renegade, Andre, I have a 2.4 liter Tiger Shark multi-air four-cylinder. Oh, really? Well, I have the same engine. Oh, yeah, well, mine is paired to a nine-speed automatic transmission. So is mine. Okay, well, I have a terrain management system with rock crawling mode. I have the same system. I also have red tow hooks and trail rated badge. You know what? I've got red tow hooks and a trail rated badge. You also have Falcon Wild Peak tires. How about you? I do also 17 inch rims. You know, I think we could actually swap these <laughs> wheels out and it'll be no different. Yes. But I have 8.5 inches of ground clearance. Oh, yeah, I've got 8.7. What? Yeah. You have more ground clearance than me? That's right, I am taller than you. Well, sort of. The, the Jeep is taller, not, not me. All right, Andre, who goes first? How about you do? <laughs> oh, I get the honors. All right, if I get stuck, you come rescue me. All right, then start the snow. Right. Hey, Andre, you know we've got the same four-wheel drive system, right? Yes. So in this vehicle, like yours, what we have here is the ability to lock it in four low, just like that. So it splits torque front and rear. Yeah, and basically what that does is it locks it in first gear. Okay. And then we can also select the kind of terrain we want. And uh, in this case, I'm gonna go with rock. So it's four wheel drive, lock, and rock mode. All right, here we go. Stage one, gold mine hill in the snow, in the Renegade. It'll be interesting to see which of these two vehicles is better off-road. Like I say, they're almost identical in terms of the way that their four-wheel drive systems function. The tires are identical. FCA and Jeep are identical. The power plants are identical. Really, the biggest difference is that this one's a little bit smaller and costs about $4,000 less. But, does that mean that they have different off-road abilities? We're about to find out. We're about to find out. So far, stage one, so good. Now, this one is a little bit shorter, which is always good. Smaller is better. That's why those Suzuki's were so popular off road because they were tiny. Like, thread the needle through these trees. All right, end of stage one. Now for stage two. Now, the reason we stop is to make it harder on the vehicle, in this case, the Jeep. We lose all momentum. So now the algorithm is going to come into play and it's going to try to find out where there is traction. So I lost traction for a second, found it, floor, it's working hard, and there it goes. Yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty easy. Not very dramatic, but this is where it's gonna get hard. Stage three. Dude, the stage three is really kind of washed out. Yeah, that hole is really big, and I was about to say that front end tends to kind of dig in. All right, wish me luck. Now, both of these vehicles, besides being almost identical, <laughs> in terms of what they have are trail rated. And what does trail rated mean? Well, it means that they're the most off-road worthy versions of these vehicles. And I've in fact done a video that explains all the parameters and you can click on that video up here. Hey, Andre, how much does yours cost? 34,000. 34, dude, mine is 30. So not only is it taller, but it's cheaper. Here we go. I'm just gonna take it slow. And I can't even get to the hole. It's already struggling. Oh, there it goes. Now we're in the hole. Now we're in the hole. Now we're stuck. Now we're stuck. Come on. It's floored. It's trying. It's trying. It's trying. It's trying. <laughs> and it's not making it. So I'll do it one more time. This time with a little bit of more momentum. Just to give it a little bit of speed and see if we can do it. There we go. A little bit of speed. In the hole. In the hole. And the hole through the hole. Yes! <laughs> it did it! I used the Nathan method there, which is basically go to 11. Just floor it, grit your teeth, close your eyes, and hope for the best. And it worked.
So it's hard to show how deep this hole really is, this rut, but keep in mind I'm about 6'2", I'm going to go stand in it. So let's see how high the top of it is. Uh, so it's right about here. So right about to my right about to my belly. So this is probably about a two to three foot hole that we dropped the uh, vehicle into. So it's pretty impressive that the Jeep actually climbed out of it. Now, you would think that Andre's Compass with identical tires, identical all-wheel drive system, but a little bit bigger would be just as capable. I don't know, we're gonna find out. You Jeep fans out there probably know that the Compass is built on a stretched version of the Renegade's platform and that both of these Jeeps have identical power plants that put out 180 horsepower. But did you know that the Renegade is made in Italy and the Compass is made in Mexico? Now we left Andre in the mountains because he said he was strong like a Russian bear, but we're here at IMI Motorsports where we're going to drag race these two. So I need some help with the Compass. Tommy, are you ready to do a bit of a drag racing world cup let's do it it's italy versus mexico this is gonna be fun now keep in mind that this car is just a little bit lighter than the compass but otherwise they're pretty much identical this car is also like a brick into the wind okay compass not hoping for too much here this is gonna be the world's slowest drag race these cars are not fast i do have more mass to carry down this track and, uh, while we're waiting for this race to finish let me have Tommy point out some of the Easter eggs in these cars. On the compass below the windshield, we've got this little lizard. And I'm not sure what the connection with the Jeep brand is here, but there's a little snake in the rear window. Okay, in the Renegade, there's a Sasquatch in the rear window. I don't get that one. But I do think that this one is a little bit cute. Goes back to the Renegade's Italian heritage. The little spider in the gas cap that says, Ciao, baby. But of course, Jeep heritage is through and through American. So to prove it, they put a flat fender Jeep crawling up the windshield. Uh, I think I might have got him. Catching up a little. <laughs> that was not a fast race. Now, which car won? Does it matter? You know what, let's just cut to the uh, slow motion replay to find out. But I do have to find out how fast or not these are from 0 to 60. So I've got the solo DL. Let me do a quick 0 to 60 run just to find out how long it takes. I think we might need a fast motion replay. Yeah, we might need a fast. I'm gonna need the whole track yeah. for the 0 to 60. And then we'll do 0 to 60 in this one too. Sure, why not? I have the solo DL set up. I'm as far back as possible on our track. Let's see how long it takes to reach 60. Keep in mind, we are a mile above sea level. Here we go. Yep, that's 50. And that's 60. And I'm off the track. Oh, 12.15 seconds. No, I saw you fly off the track. <laughs> there you have it. I think it's time we cut back to Andre in the mountains to see if the compass can make it up Gold Mine Hill. For all you skiers or boarders out there, we've got our first major snowstorm of the year rolling into the mountains, as you can tell. So uh, this might be the very last time we go up Gold Mine Hill because we're supposed to get several feet of snow out of this, and uh, yeah, then it becomes almost undoable. Well, it becomes undoable. Four-wheel drive lock, four-wheel drive low, rock mode in the Jeep Compass. And let's see if that gives me the best possible traction. You might be wondering, so the Renegade and the Compass are very close as far as their drivetrain, the powertrain, the tires, four-wheel drive system. How are they different? Well, the Compass is actually uh, categorized as a compact crossover. Renegade is a subcompact, but 
the compass is a couple of inches bigger in length and it has more interior volume a little bit more cargo volume and uh, this is stage one very rocky steep so far no much not much problem I really wish the trailhawk versions would have added a little bit more aggressive off-road tire the Falcon is okay but it's not overly aggressive this is a tough turn because it's really at an angle off camber and uh, I really have to use a judicious amount of throttle and let the system and electronics figure it out and so far it did it not much slowdown so that was fairly good but the final obstacle is what really worries me this is nerve-wracking okay these are the most off-road worthy renegade and compass they make jeep, yeah jeep would be guys at jeep would be ashamed of us andre if we didn't do this if we didn't do this and they're also the most off-road worthy in their segments yeah I mean, a not, lot of yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing in that B segment or in the C segment, right? Like the Rav Four or CRV in, or, or Juke, right? In that, there's nothing that competes that is as off-road worthy. So these have to be fully tested. Let's do it. Right, okay. And I'm gonna go for the obstacle. Use a little bit of momentum and try to really. Let the system work a little bit. I'm I'm forward. Yes. Okay, come on. It detected an obstacle. You know what? What? Take the Nathan approach. The good thing about these is I can pick my line a little bit better than in a large truck. So basically, what the system does is it decides that there's no traction and it cuts power to all four wheels. And you saw it right there. He had the floored. No wheels are turning, so now he's going to try to get a little bit of momentum and get up the hill. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit faster this time. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on, can you help me? <laughs> you really pulled me out? Roman, you really pulled me out? <laughs> I really pulled Wow, you're really strong. <laughs> I am strong like Russian band. <laughs> that was incredible. Yeah, you got stuck in, once again, just a little bit <laughs> of momentum. So it's interesting how the software in the, in the computer system says, okay, this is too hard, I'm going to slow down. Yeah. yeah and they're yeah, going to stop. Yeah, but you know, I think uh, what we proved here is that this one may be just a little heavier. Right, so it's a little bit less ground clearance. A little bit less ground clearance, so it struggled a little bit more than that one. Or that my foot is a little heavier than yours. <laughs> yes, it could be. And uh, you're really strong. <laughs> so, Andre, if it were your money, which would you buy, the Renegade or the Compass? I'll have to go for the Compass because the Renegade is a little bit too Mickey Mousey for me. Yeah. But the style of the Compass is a little bit better, in my opinion. Now you're gonna ask me what I would buy. How about you? <laughs> for 34 or 30,000? Yeah. I got a Wrangler, dude, all day long. <laughs> a Wrangler? Oh. That's the answer. Thanks for watching. Let's get out of here before the wolves come and, oh, all right. <laughs> and take a bite out of either of these jeeps. See you guys next time. Okay, thank you. Bye. Hey, Andre, so we've got identical stuff, right? But do you have a heated steering wheel? I do. Do you have heated seats? Yes. Do you have heated seats? Yes. All right, well, I've got the smaller vehicle, so I bet you I've got better fuel economy. 24 MPG combined. What do you get? Uh -huh. No, you don't. What do you mean? I have 25 combined. Look at this. You've got 25 and I've got 24? Yes. That's crazy. Why why is my smaller vehicle less fuel efficient? Well, because I'm more aerodynamic. You're just really upright up there. Yeah, it's true. It's a bit of a box, isn't it? Actually, the true answer I'm not sure about, but I'm it's going surprising. With, I'm going with it's a bit of a box. <laughs> yes. I'm going with that.